Well, hey everybody. Today I wanted to start by asking you four questions. So I want you to think about how you would answer these questions. First question, why do you love the people that you love? Do you love them because they first loved you? Because they care for you? Because they're kind, they're funny, they're smart? Or do you just love them because we're called to? Number two, how do you show your love to these people? Do you help them? Do you share with them? Do you give them gifts or help them clean? Do you think about them before yourself? Question three, where does love come from? Well, I hope you answered God, because that's where our love comes from. Question four, how did God show his love for us? There's a lot of different ways that God showed his love for us. One way is by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Another is that he created the whole world and each one of us. He also gave us his Holy Spirit and the Bible. And those are just to name a few. Loving another person means doing what's best for them, even if it sometimes means that we don't get the best for ourselves. Loving someone may be hard to do at times, it is much easier to love the people we know and like that love us too. It's much harder to love people we don't know or people who are bad or mean. God's love is much stronger and better than ours. He loves us and always does what's best for us. And he loves people even though they are bad and mean and don't know him or don't deserve him love at all. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 states, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. God's love is so big and great that he sent his son to make a way for us to be in a right relationship with him. We have talked a lot about that gift over the last several weeks. It's the best gift that we could be given. God created everything and he created us to have a relationship with him. He created us so he could love us and we could love him. Even though we sin and deserve death, God still wants a relationship with each one of us. But God is holy and just, so our sin keeps us from having that relationship with him. A sinless person had to die to take that punishment for our um, to take that punishment that we deserve. God showed us grace by sending his sinless son, Jesus Christ, to take that punishment for our sins. There is no greater way that God could have shown his love than to send his son to die for each one of us. 1 John 4 verses 9 and 10 says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we would... Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And by trusting that Christ took the punishment for our sins, we can have a relationship with God. And when we have a relationship with Christ, we can experience the fullness of God's love. A love that is never stopping, never giving up, unbreakable, always and forever there. His love is there for us at all times. God's love won't stop. I am sure there are people we would do just about anything for. We might die for someone who loves us or someone we think is good. But God sent his son Jesus to die for sinners. The people who are his enemies. The people who have done wrong. When Jesus was preparing to die, the people he was dying for spit on him, whipped him, and made fun of him. They were his enemies. The Bible says that we too are sinners and enemies of God until we accept Jesus as our Savior. Romans 5.10 says, For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Once we accept to have eternal life, and as I... Um, mentioned before, we get to experience God's love in more fullness. So once we accept Jesus into our lives, we get that eternal life, and then we can experience God's love in a more complete picture. 
Uh, Colossians uh, chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, it says, Once you were alienated from God and you and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm and do mo not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. So here Paul talks about the gospel and its impact on our lives. And he says, we are free from blemish. Let's continue to live out our faith and stand firm in what we believe Jesus did for us. He cared so much, he used his never stopping, never giving up, unbreakable, always and forever love to save us. God's love is much stronger and more amazing than our love. He loved us and did what was best for us, even though we were sinners and didn't deserve his love at all. Love is who God is, and his love never changes. He's our model for what love truly is. And we can read all about God's love for his people. Um, times where God rescues his people out of slavery. He provides for thousands of people to eat sends Jesus to save us, and the list goes on. Luke 15 verses 11 through 31 is the story of the prodigal son. Let's take a look at what it says. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant council a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to be a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his census, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out, go back to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, and he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the, flat, the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing, so he called one of his servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeying your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with, with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him? My son, the father said, you were always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. The father in this story loved his son so much, even though he didn't respect him and he wasted all he had been given. When the son came back, his dad welcomed him with open arms. He threw him a party. When we come to God, his love is like that. He wants us near him and loves us so much that he's basically saying, always come back to me. I love you. Let's recap. Loving another person means doing what's best for them. Remember that God created us for a loving relationship with him, but our sins can keep us from that relationship. And because God is just, he had to send someone to pay for that punishment from our, for our sins, which was death, 
but because God loved us, he sent Jesus to take that punishment so that we could have eternal life. He loves us and does what is best for us. I want to leave you with this. How can you love others this week? Think about different ways that you can do that. I'm going to give you four examples. You can make a card um, and sharing how much you appreciate or are thankful for someone. You can give that to someone in your family. You could help your family around the house. Maybe your parents have a lot of work to do, like cleaning or something for Christmas. You could help them do that. You can share your favorite things with your siblings. Or you could make cookies and a card and bring it to your neighbor to show that you care about them. Let's go and share God's love this week to others. Let's experience God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreakable, always and forever love. See you guys next time.